Um, but I don't think rods are necessarily the best things to use. Uh, this all goes back, actually, in the literature. Mm -hmm. Pieces and parcels ever since Humphrey Davy, mm -hmm. 200 years ago. And uh, I've done a lot of this literature compilation and mm -hmm. putting all these little pieces together. Uh, the uh, You had uh, an a laboratory over in England that you were affiliated with. Was it Harwell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What they went into experiments on this. Did they ever announce anything? I've never been able to find it in the literature. I thought this question would come up. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought some slides. <laughs> but Harwell said that they couldn't find any excess entropy. Can't hear you. Speak. Harwell said they couldn't find anything. Oh. Uh, they had about six or eight people working on it, but were they in too much of a hurry, too? Six or eight, more than that. However, when we were working in Utah, we insisted that our experiments be independently evaluated. So that evaluation was sub not done by the original team. And eventually, it was done by Wilfred Hansen at Utah State University in Logan and published, uh, which prompted me to ask Havel to release that data. And it's to their great credit that they released that data. So I will show you some of Havel's results, where they compared. These are L stands for addition of liquid. <coughs> Uh, and these are all experiment cycles, okay? These are experiment cycles. This is a blank in light water. This is a calibration pulse. Here is heavy water. So if you look at this, you see suddenly a very strange phenomenon, which we should also see in ourselves, which put us, one of the things which put us on the track was that suddenly the cell temperature will decrease. Well, the cell temperature doesn't increase if there's the source of heat in the system. So here the thing, the cell temperature is increasing. And here the cell temperature is increasing, here it's increasing, right. and it goes on and on and on. <laughs> now, in fact, Harvard could never have detected the normal excess entropy production because the system wasn't accurate enough. But they did see these bursts here. Here is a burst. Here is oh, they actually go? Oh, they had all these heat bursts all over the place. Oh. And when you analyze, if you say there is no excess heat production, there is no excess heat production. At the minima, you know, you can sort of say, okay, I don't know what your heat transfer coefficient is, but I'll say it's naught here, and then I'll see how much heat is released there in the first. You get, uh, uh, you get uh, for the blanks, uh, only, a, ne only cooling, which means you have made a very conservative estimate of the heat transfer coefficient because it only gets cooling. And for the uh, thing when there is an actual... So they let it die on the vine, huh? Yeah, and when you, let it, when you look at the uh, real heat bursts, you see these, which is of the order of 200 milliwatts, which is about what we had in 1989. So they actually had about the same as we had. Yeah, but they didn't have the guts to come out and say it. Well, they had decided, they published that they... Their system was very good, and they had seen nothing. Uh -huh. You know, people never retract negative statements. Uh -huh. <laughs> the history of science is that people sometimes retract positive statements if they then they feel, feel they are erroneous. But I, have, well, have you ever seen anybody retract a negative statement? You just let it stand there. you got to have a lot of bravery. Thank no, you. No, it's just not done. <laughs> yeah. Sir. Did you or anyone else replicate that one cubic centimeter ignition? I haven't had the guts to do it. Uh, you know, you just don't do that sort of thing, do you? We've done it. You have done it, good. Well, I'm glad, I'm sure. The, the various people report. Well, we did, we did it the cheap way. Mm -hmm. My uh, laboratory, and it makes a beautiful laboratory, is an old RV recreation vehicle. <laughs> Yes. You've got electricity, sink, and water, and if you have an explosion, you step in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Mm. Well, I think that's the on schedule is now 
920. So, uh, I thank Martin Fleischman for his talk.